as you guys have noticed, my um, I'm not here today, <laughs> but I did record a video in advance this video to still have a lesson today. Um, don't worry, I'm fine. I <laughs> just had some last minute things come up. Um, but I am excited to talk to you about today more about world building, specifically the aspect of building a religion. Um, especially because this can be a very integral part of your world depending on what you're writing. Um, Alright, so the first thing that we, you need to consider when you're building a religion for your novel is, most importantly, um, don't base your fantasy religion on any real religion. Because yes, it will be noticed, yes, it will be problematic, and you will have a harder time getting it published. Another thing, obviously, don't be disrespectful of other religions in your depiction of your fantasy religion. Try to make sure that it is your own unique creation and you're not bashing on anyone else's religion. Um, other thing that you need to ask yourself is, is your religion important to your book at this exact second of writing it? If the answer is no, then you should do one of two things not include the religion and just have it be part of the world passively in the background that you mention but don't really dive into or if it's going to be important later like maybe say halfway through the book but not now um then maybe build up to it and don't worry about building it until you get to that part maybe just have a few details that are most prevalent that you know but don't worry about the heavy intense, in-depth trenching of world building, and specifically of building a religion, until you are far down the road of needing it. Now the reason why is because of the fact that um, this can cause, be a primary cause of world builder's disease. Now some of you are familiar with this term, some of you aren't. World builder's disease is incredibly common, and the reason that it happens is that you decide that you have to build the entire world, every iota of it, before you can possibly move forward. That's not functional. That's not going to work. That's going to inhibit your ability to move forward and write. And sometimes they may make it so that you are un unable to write at all. Um, so it's important that you take those things into consideration before you go absolutely crazy bonkers with the world building and then end up not writing it at all because you're too busy world building. All right, with that caveat being said, we're gonna continue on to different aspects of building a religion. Now, first thing we're gonna cover, what is the main entity of the religion? Is it a being, a concept, or a piece of the world? Now I'm going to define these here in a minute. Um, for example, if it is a being, here are the things you need to do. So being, think humanoid, alien, um, animal, spirit, in general, entity that is considered to have its own personality and living will. Um, that being said, um, and this being generally has a body. Now sometimes people are like, well, the spirit is of the land. We're gonna get into that later. This is talking about someone that has a body that looks eerily similar to, or is similar to a person or whatever race, fantasy race that you have for the religion, elf, dwarf, etc. cetera. Um, this being, the best thing that you can do to create a religion around a being is make sure that you know the being's name. What are they like? Are they a good person? Are they, a, or God rather, are they a good God? Are they a bad God? If they're a bad God, what's the incentive to worship? Generally people like to worship good gods. So what's the incentive to worship a bad one? Why do they feel they have to worship this God even if they're absolutely terrible to them? Um, is it because they worry they'll be punished? Is it because if they don't worship this bad God, then the world will be taken away or they have to worship this bad god because they know that their sister is enslaved to this bad god and she'll be treated badly if they don't what's your main character's reason for following a bad god or if the god is good 
what's their reason for following a religion instead of choosing to be an atheist or not follow a religion? Now, I know considering we live in Utah, that might be a pretty easy question for most people, um, but try to really dive deep into this for your character because since it's a different religion from the one you believe in, it's important that you establish these reasonings. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to go into if it is a being is, is there a book about this god? Is there a prophet that they follow? Is there some sort of fantasy entity like a crystal ball or something that they're able to connect their deity through? Um, what makes it so they are able to, in other words, be connected with the word and the desires of this god? Um, for example, the Greeks. The Greeks always took things like weather or bad omens as signs of the gods. Same thing with the Norse and the Egyptians. You know, they'd see a raven and they'd be like, oh, that's Odin for Norse mythology. And then for Greek mythology, it'd be like, there was a powerful strike of lightning, so clearly Zeus is on our side or is against us, opposingly. Um, and then with Egypt, you know, the reason that the pharaoh ruled was because he was the son of Ra, the sun god, you know, those kinds of things are important to consider when creating a religion. Another thing that you need to take into account, um, side note, is, is this religion prominent or rare? Um, there are some religions with less than 500 members, and then there are other religions that are worldwide. Then there are other, even other religions that the cities practically were entirely all religious, and that if you weren't religious, you were considered crazy. Is it that way, or is it the other way around, where it's kind of like if you're a religious zealot, you're kind of considered weep? Um, that's something important to take into consideration when you're building this world and you're building this up. Um, it's important to make sure that you know how they are informed of this religion and how many of them there are. What's the ratio in your fantasy world? Um, how, what informs them of how they live if it's a being? Because generally with a being, you know, they have a personality, they tell you things, they let you know what the best way to live is according to their beliefs. Um, and, like me, I'm Christian, and I believe that um, the Book of Mormon is very much prevalent for me, and that the Bible is very much prevalent for me, and the New Testament is prevalent for me, and the Prophet. Um, I believe that they all help me to better worship my god. Um, now, other people have very different religions. And again, don't base your fantasy religion on a real religion, but think about other religions and how they work. And think about, for your religion, okay, well, if their god is like this, and my god's like this, how is that going to affect things? How are those differences going to change things? that's a better, healthier way to look at it. Um, it's important, too, to recognize that it's not always a person or a deity or a godly figure. Um, some religions believe in other sorts of things. For example, um, is there a concept that they find sacred? Some religions revolve around a concept. It's less of, we believe in this deity, and more, we believe you should do this. So, for example, um, there could be a religion, I recently was watching a show that had a religion of peace, and they believed that they had to be peaceful no matter what. Even if someone raised a weapon against them and tried to kill them, they believed they should be peaceful and strive for peace at all costs at all times, and that was their concept. There wasn't a deity forcing them to do this or encouraging them to do this. They just wanted to be peaceful, and that was the religion that they lived and breathed. It was a conceptual religion. Um, how does that change the way they lived? Uh, live, especially the concept, like with the one um, religion that I mentioned seeing in this sci-fi show. They literally wouldn't raise a weapon, even in self-defense. That is a drastically different way of life than the way that most of us live. Um, you gotta take into consideration, if they are truly in embodying this concept, what does it mean to embody this concept in your life, in the way that you live? Does it change the way you eat? Does it change the way you sleep? Does it change the way that you move around? Does it change the way that the economy works? For example, if the concept is that 
nature is key and all powerful, then that's very much going to change the economy. We have an economy that barely cares, sorry, my nose is just about how much we consume. Uh, we chop down trees all day and no one cares. Um, some of us care, but a lot of us, unfortunately, sadly, don't care. Um, if you had a religion based on the concept of sacredness of plant life and animalia, um, that would drastically change the way that our economy works today. And as a result, you need to take that into consideration when building your religion. You need to say, okay, um, basically you need to build a decision tree kind of thing. Like, um, do they believe in this? Yes or no? And then kind of go, okay, if no, then what? If yes, then what? And that will kind of help you. Sorry, my nose was really itchy today. <laughs> That will kind of help you move from point A to point B. You gotta slowly move in that direction. Now you don't have to go bonkers and run with it and just go crazy. You can take things one step at a time. As I said, if your religion is not pertinent to your character's life and novel currently, then you can wait on a bit. You can delay it a little bit and just kind of let it mull over in your mind. Um, Another thing that I'd like to discuss is, do they believe in something like the power um, of greed? If so, why? If this is a conceptual religion, what makes them believe in something bad that is bad for others but good for themselves? Um, who started this religion? Who primarily said that it was supposedly something they should live by? What encourages them to continue to live by this religion? You really do have to think about that if it is a considered evil religion. Um, just because of the fact that a lot of people in fantasy novels will be like, oh, it's an evil religion, ta-da, and then don't do any world building. Those are the novels that end up sounding preachy and really frustrating. If you don't want your novel to sound preachy or frustrating, the best thing that you can do is make sure that you explain why they would follow this evil religion. Is it because they're afraid? Is it because they want power? Is it because they believe that inherently all people are greedy, so why not just be the greediest of the greedy? Um, there are so many different ways that you could go about this, but just make sure that if you have an evil religion, especially a conceptual one, you make sure to explain why. And yes, there are some stupidities of humanity, and therefore it's going to happen in some novels sometimes, but generally I would say try to make sure the reasoning is solid and sound. Um, the reason why is because even though that does happen in real life, like the Hatfields and the McCoys, some of them don't even know why they're still fighting. Um, they're just still fighting. <laughs> and in some ways, that's a religion. That's a religion of war. <laughs> um, because it's a belief and a concept that they believe that the others are inherently bad and that they should fight. Um, that is something that you need to take into account, is that even though things like that happen, we as humans hate that kind of thing. I don't know about you, but it's really frustrating when someone's like, we hate them, and they're like, why? And the other group's like, I don't know, we just hate them. And you're like, okay. That's boring. Um, <laughs> you gotta make sure that your reader understands why this concept is important, why this deity is important, why they would go through something so vile and evil and follow someone so vile and evil. And don't just say, oh, it's because they're orcs and therefore they're evil. You can get away with that, but honestly, it's better writing to have it with a real purpose. To have it be a real thing. There are evil people in the world, and they have reasons for doing things. They're terrible reasons for doing things, but they still have reasoning. They're not just evil for the sake of being evil. Very rarely is someone born evil bred evil and will forever be evil. That is, in my opinion, something that rarely happens. It's only a one, in two per one to two percent chance out of all the population, in my opinion. Generally, people try to do good, try to be good, and so having a reason for them to follow something that is a terrible religion to follow or a terrible mantra to follow is important. It's important to delineate why that is the case. Anyway, enough on that. Um, then we're going to talk about next about the peace of the world, if they worship a piece of the world. So for example, if they worship owls, or if they worship nature, 
why is it sacred to them? Or if they worship, I don't know, let's say iron. You know, you could have a whole religion around iron. Um, why is it important? Why is it sacred? Um, why do they believe that it has such divine power? Um, what makes this thing worth worshipping? You could have a whole religion regarding iron and the fact that people worship it because it keeps the evil fae at bay or something like that. And so they see it as a divine substance um, or something like that. Just first thing that pops into my head. Um, what makes them... What make, how do they treat this substance or this thing, um, if it's nature or, you know, a bear or if it's iron? Um, how do they treat this thing or creature or being or piece of the universe? Um, how do they show their worship? Um, for example, if it was iron, you could say they show their worship by making sure that it's um, always very ornately crafted. You're not allowed to work with iron unless you've had years and years and years and years and years of experience. You have to try all the other metals first, and even then, you might not still make it. Um, or if it's nature, you might say that they um, refuse to cut down any sort of nature in order to build their homes. And so as a result, they'll only use wood that has ever already been felled in the process of a storm or things like that. And then they always give thanks to nature for those felled trees and things like that. Those are all various examples of worshipping a thing rather and a or a thing or a great or a greater thing, like a nature or the desert or something larger than ourselves. That is one thing you want to keep in mind when creating your own religion, is that it's all about worshipping something larger than ourselves, right? If we worship just some other random guy on the street, that wouldn't make sense, it wouldn't feel right. We worship something larger than ourselves because we believe that life is larger than we can possibly understand. Or at least that's how I understand religion. Um, Alright, next one. Um, think Something that you are going to want to take into consideration, if there are multiple concepts that they believe in, multiple pieces, multiple gods, um, do they work together or do they fight? Um, are there two different religions and one is of the desert and one is of the jungle and they fight because they're both like, hey, mine's better than yours. Or do they work together and they see it as a symbiotic harmony with the oasises and the deserts and they work together? Or is this a, or multiple religions for each god? If there's a, if you have a pantheon of god like the Greeks, do you have a bunch of different religions, or do you have one religion that encapsulates them all? Where it's like you believe in the whole Greek pantheon. Or is it um, that you just believe in so-and-so, and another person just believes in so-and-so. And you pick a god, and then you stick with that god, and you can move around, but it's generally discouraged, you know? That's up to you, in your world building. Um, but you gotta figure out, if there are multiple of anything, do they work together? Do they not? And if so, how do they work together? Or why do they fight? These things are all important, again, because of the layering. You want to make sure there are reasons. Your people are, and your characters in your novel are going to feel richer and more harmonious the more you make it ingrained into your culture, into the depth of your universe rather than just skimming over the top and saying, oh yeah, that's cool, I guess. They did this and they did that. Uh, yay! We did it! You gotta make sure that it's fully explained to the best of your ability. Now again, be careful with this because world builder's disease is a very real problem and you don't want to just keep building. I would say with your religion, answer all the questions that I have before you to the best of your ability. I'd say two sentences max and I'd say short sentences, um, and then leave it be. Let it go and let it develop more as you write, because it will develop more as you write. You could do as much, you could do months and months of outlining, and ultimately once you actually put pen to page, it's going to change, it's going to morph, it's going to evolve. Do you need to keep track of those evolutions? Yes, but that's why you have a world building handbook that you create as you write. Um, can you have a base? Absolutely. But if your base is too solid, it actually makes it so that 
think of it like this. When you're building a house, you want to have a solid foundation, right? But at the same time, if you spend all of your money on building that foundation, you're not going to have any money left to build the house. And it's the same thing with your energy reserves when it comes to writing a novel. You need to make sure that your foundation is solid enough that your story can uh, stand on it, but you want to make sure that it's not so solid to the point that you spend up all your energy reserves and can no longer write the book and no longer have a will to write the book or believe that it's so strict that if you try to write the book there's no way you can do it justice those are all various problems that can occur when you continue to world build and world build and world build and never actually get around to the actual writing of it so again i reiterate make sure that you answer these questions but that you don't go too crazy with um the detail and with going into it um for example lord of the rings is it possible to do that much detail? Absolutely. It, does it make it 10 times harder? There's a reason J.R.R. Tolkien only ever published that series. And it's because he went a little too hardcore on the world building. Why does Brandon Sanderson um, find that he's able to publish way more than J.R.R. Tolkien, even though he has just as much good world building? Well, because unlike J.R., he decided to world build as he goes. He actually talks about the fact that there's a lot of times where he's like, oh, that piece just kind of fell into place or oh I threw that foreshadowing in later those kinds of world building concepts come to him as he goes he has a solid foundation and then he works with it from there and that works far better than what J.R.R. Tolkien did not to slander J.R.R. Tolkien he's amazing and what he did was amazing but he did have world builders disease very clearly and he let it overtake him to the point where that's the only thing he ever published um, and I think that's part of the reason why, especially with the Cimmerillion. The Cimmerillion, if you've ever read it, is basically the Bible for the Lord of the Rings. He basically wrote his own Bible because his religion was so immersive. And that's amazing. Some people love that. But make sure that you don't let it take over your life. Otherwise, you're not going to get to write all the things that you want to write. All right. Back to the religion writing side of things. Um, you gotta make sure you know how they worship. How does it affect their everyday lives? Is it like um, they have to stop and pray um, over every single meal or else they'll be smote down? Or is it just that they pray over a meal if they're particularly grateful? Or do they not pray at all? Do they see something else as being more sacred? Maybe they um, have a certain ritual of painting their face in such a way that proves their loyalty to their um, overall belief system. How does that affect their everyday lives? Um, are there certain rituals that take place that affect their everyday life? Um, there are loads of examples of this in real life religions, but as I said, let's try to steer clear of that. Um, make sure that you note these kinds of things though. Do they have to touch a certain statue before they walk into a house to show fealty to the god? Do they have to um, give offerings to their god? If so, what kind of offerings? And um, how long have these offerings been going on? Has it been proven to be effective? Or are people just doing it because they feel they should? Um, do they only eat certain foods? Is there dietary restriction based on this religion? Do they have to be vegetarian because of the fact that they believe that all animals are sacred? And so as a result, they're vegetarian. Or is it because they worship nature, they believe that they have to grow their own food because to take from the wilds would be a sin? Um, these kinds of things are important to... Um, lay out as well because dietary things can actually be a very big part of religions um next thing um do they believe that certain actions endear them to their religion slash god so for example with the peaceful people they believed that if they ever took up arms against someone else that basically they'd be shunned from their religion because their whole religion is about peace if someone else shot a gun but they just uh but they didn't touch the gun then they were considered safe but if they picked up the gun and shot, they'd be considered a terrible person. Or is there a certain action that endears them to a god? Um, in which case, you know, bowing to this god or wearing a flower crown shows that you have loyalty to this god. Um, these are all important things to note, especially if your character is involved in the religion. Because how they interact with that religion is going to indicate 
how they feel about religion and whether or not it's important to them. Um, do they have to dress a certain way? A lot of religions have certain dress codes, um, whether it be that you have to cover your head when you're praying or whether it be that you have to cover your entire body or whether it be that you have to wear a certain outfit when going to worship or a certain color um, or that you aren't allowed to wear a certain color only certain people are allowed to wear that certain color um, for example in Roman times uh, royalty pretty much were the only ones who wore purple now I know that's not a religious thing but you could make it a religious thing theoretically in your world um, how do their places of worship work uh, um, and look are they a communal thing that are all taken care of by everyone or do they have certain servants of the temple or do they have um, one person who's the guardian of the temple kind of thing or does the temple just sit out in the middle of nowhere and no one really takes care of it but they all visit there and it's just considered a sacred site um, are the is how if if then how does it look um, you know is it crawling with vines or is it absolutely littered with flowers? Or is it covered in a giant blanket of snow because it's far, far up in the mountains in a cave or something like that? I don't know. You can go crazy with it. There are numerous different ways that you can go about this. Um, but it's important that you determine how their places of worship work. Now, if you don't have a place of worship for them, you can always show how their places of worship look at home. Um, now, some of you may or may not have experience with this, but a lot of people like to do family home evenings or things like that where they'll have a little moment where they have a place in their home. Um, and some people have more fancy than others, um, but even if it's just a family room or a place where they all sit, or if it, their religion is specific about a certain statue, you could have a statue in the center of a room with a table and food around it you know there are all sorts of different ways that worship can look both in a home and in larger structures um do they um like i said is it heavily important to them that everyone's religious and so it's heresy to not be religious or is it kind of the opposite or maybe it's just normal whether you're religious or a-religious um these are all important factors to consider when building your world all right, last thing I'm going to cover. Are there any specific practices they do in their religion for coming of age or becoming a religious leader? Um, this is important because several religions, excuse me, several religions involve coming of age practices or becoming religious leader practices. Do they have to go to school for it? Do they have to endure a certain trial? Do they have to be chosen by their God? Do they, um, for coming of age, do they have to pierce their ears a certain amount of times, or craft their first spear, or, um, you know, catch an owl, you know, there are dozens and dozens of different ways that you can do this. I will say, try to make them all connected, um, make sure that you're not just having, um, random things that are like, they catch an owl, even though that has nothing to do with the religion aside from catching an owl. Now, are there sometimes things that happen like that? Yes, but it, again, we prefer things that make sense and are in-depth because in-depth world building is generally what people prefer and generally what people like. Um, okay, now this video is shorter than I anticipated it to be considering I had so many notes on this. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to email me um if you have any if you don't have my email make sure to uh, comment down below any questions that you might have on building a religion for your novel um if you have any questions about um regular editing or helping you with various things please also let me know um i'll try to get it as soon as i can i do have a big pile up of editing projects right now so as a result i will get to it when i can if i'm slow i apologize um, but I want to thank you so much for anyone who came today and listened to this video on play with Nicole. Um, please be good for Nicole. And, um, if you aren't here in person, please know that Nicole is wonderful and that she's another great resource at our American Fork Library that you can talk to regarding writing. 
and that um, she actually helps me grade most of the stories that we have for our story contests. So as far as that goes, um, just know that she is a great resource too. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Um, but if there's any questions that you have, feel free to ask her or email me or mention them down in the comments. Thank you so much. Bye.